let's just start with the optimistic note, which I've, I've heard in your TED Talks and in your podcast interviews you've done. Lasting love and attachment, long lasting love is indeed possible. No question about it that it's possible. And we've actually proved it, uh, proven it in the brain. I mean, I and my colleagues have now put over 100 people into a brain scanner and studied the brain circuitry of romantic love and attachment. And the first group were people who had just fallen happily in love. The second were people who rejected in love. And the third, just as you're saying, are people who were in love long term. They kept on coming into the lab and saying, I'm still in love with him. I'm still in love with her. And these people were all married an average of 21 years. Uh, They were all in their 50s and 60s. Uh, They the vast majority had adult children. And um, and they said that they were in love. So we put them in the brain scanner using uh, fMRI. And sure enough, we found the same activity in the same brain regions linked with intense romantic love that we found among uh, people who were just falling in love. But we also found something else. You know, before you put people in this these scanners, it's very expensive, very time consuming. You give them a lot of questionnaires before you put them in the scanner. And so one of the questionnaires we put uh, asked them to fill out was uh, unhappiness. And we found three brain regions linked with long-term happiness. Now, psychologists will tell you all kinds of things about what happens, you know, how to make a happy long-term partnership. All good. But this is what happens in the brain. We found activity in three brain regions, a brain region linked with empathy, a brain region linked with controlling your own stress and your own emotions, and a brain region linked with what I call positive illusions, the ability to overlook what you don't like about somebody and Mm -hmm. focus on what you do. So it's entirely possible. Uh, In one study I did, I asked uh, 1,500 long-term married people whether they would marry the same person again. And something like 82% said yes. So we're always hearing the bad news. But Uh, is the spouse in the room when you do that question? (laughs) Uh, no, but uh, there's no question about it that people lie. They not only lie to other people, but they lie to themselves. But uh, brain scanning machines don't lie. Yeah, good and, point. Uh, and you can see the activity in various brain regions uh, as they look at a photograph of their sweetheart. And uh, so uh-huh. that's uh, pretty convincing. Okay, so in, in those happiness areas, like does, does that apply to the beginning, like the romantic love and the lust stage? Because I know we're going to get to those as well. Yeah, uh, we didn't. Uh, I didn't study um, that. I didn't put in long-term happiness questionnaires, of course, when people had just fallen in love within the last uh, six weeks. But you know what? Um, romantic love can be triggered instantly. It's like a sleeping cat. It can be wake- awakened instantly, just like you can be scared instantly. You can be angry instantly. You can be in love instantly. It, it, it's a brain region that can be triggered. Mm. But feelings of deep attachment for somebody takes time. And that's, I think, one of the things that we really see in a long-term partnership. Not only that feeling of intense romantic love still, but also feelings of deep attachment, which is a different brain system. All right. So I've heard you talk about those three stages, or I I don't know if you'd call them stages or just sort of areas of love. There's lust or sex drive. There's romantic love. That's the, oh my God, we're I'm in love, the beginning. And then there's the, <laughs> the longer attachment stage. And I want to kick it off by talking to you about um, Bill Maher. <laughs> it's a weird place to start, but he is a confirmed bachelor. He loves women. He talks very openly about that fact and about the fact that he's not really interested in getting married or working on sort of the long, long term relationship because he thinks the sacrifice is passion. And it was funny because I was on a show one of the times and we were talking backstage and I was like, I really want to disabuse you of this notion. I think there can be passion, as as you would say, Helen, in, in attachment, you know, in the long term version. Good for you, and, Megan. Good for you. And he did not. He didn't agree and he didn't want to hear it. And he thought I was being holier than thou. And I was like, OK, wrong target. And I kind of moved on. But yeah. I maintain, right, that their passion can be there for all three stages. Absolutely. Well, first of all, very smart of you to not call them stages. I mean, originally you said, well, they they basically are brain systems, three brain systems that evolve from mating and reproduction, sex drive, feelings of intense romantic love, and feelings of deep attachment. And they're different brain systems. They can operate together or apart uh, separately. Um, But uh, in a long-term, very happy marriage, we found 
all three. They still were deeply interested in in kissing and hugging, still uh, at least at times coming and going, feelings of intense romantic love and an underlying thing of deep uh, attachment. But I just want to tell you something about him. Um, I think that, you know, a lot of people won't agree with me, but in a long-term, very good marriage or relationship, I don't feel you need to work. I mean, it's very popular in America to think that, I oh, agree long with you. Thing, oh, you have to do all this work. I don't think that's true. And my colleague at the Kinsey Institute, uh, uh, Dr. Justin Garcia, the two of us agree that you got to pick the right person. Yes. <laughs> and if you've got the right person, and that's what he hasn't done. He hasn't found the kind of person that um, we don't have to make sacrifices. Where you dying to get home and talk to the person. You know, I mean, for example, I got married, what, a year ago. Now I'm seven. I was married at 75. (laughs) So I might have agreed with them some time ago. But the bottom line is when you find the right person, um, it's a pleasure, you know, and and I don't know how old he is, but uh, eventually he may well find the right person. And and I think there's tricks, too. I mean, for example, I and my sweetheart, we do L.A.T., living apart together. So I have my apartment. He has his. I see him almost every night, but two, a couple nights a week, I'm I'm out by myself. I go see my girlfriends. I happen to love the theater and the arts, et cetera. And he loves to read and eat pizza. And I don't, I mean, I like to read, but bottom line is, so, I mean, if you can find a person who, who enables you to be who you really are, mm. uh, who enjoys and loves who you really are uh, uh, and lets you be yourself, uh, you can find you, it, it can work. It's just that he hasn't met that person yet and he's gotten himself bogged down. And I think a good deal of psychology that long term partnerships take work. Yes, I tried to break through it. And I know what he's talking about, that, that initial swoony feeling. But even when you are in a relationship that's a year or two, that initial swoony feeling doesn't necessarily last that long. But if if nurtured, if you've chosen well, it can it can grow into something very exciting and that maintains the heat when you want the heat, right? I think that's, he doesn't want to give up the heat. Right. And um, right. so I don't, we'll, 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 I'm going to send this segment to him and and then we'll see what his <laughs> well, response is. Well, the bottom line is there's ways care. to keep the heat on, you know, and one of them is novelty, novelty, novelty. You know, the basic brain system for romantic love is triggered by, it's triggered by the dopamine system. That's what gives you the focus, the energy, the elation, the optimism, the craving for another person. And what you've got to do is keep triggering that brain system, doing novel things together. Uh, you know, uh, I don't mean just swinging from chandeliers, just take your bicycles off to dinner instead of uh, taking the car, uh, go someplace different for your summer vacation. And this is one of the reasons that, um, that um, uh, you know, when you go and take a vacation, you can suddenly feel romance again mm-hmm. because it's so novel. And that novelty is triggering the dopamine system and giving those, you those sensations again. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.